Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about Piano in Blue by Cinema Simples. This is the version 2 update that Cinema Simples recently put up. And I will talk about the difference between the current version and the previous version in just a moment. But before I do that, I'm going to play some stuff and let you guys hear what the library actually sounds like. So here it goes. So that was a piece by Mendelssohn. The piece didn't actually end that way, but uh, yeah, let's B section go somewhere I'm good. But yeah, I mean, this whole piece is like 10 minutes or something, so I'm not gonna play it all that. So let's move on. I really love the sound of the library, especially the touch. So yeah, being able to play lightly is awesome. Piano in Blue is also very suitable for film scoring because the sound characteristic is just very smoothing and sparse. For example, you will probably hear in some films where piano plays like this. Alright, enough noodling. So, um, yeah, let's go over the GUI a little bit. So, as you can see, there's a close mic, a room mic, and a surround mic. So, I can turn them off and purge the memory anytime if I want. See that? Um. Sounds like. And the uh, room mic. very distant which is nice sometimes you probably want that as like a background when you know if you just yeah and uh, let me turn it back on and there's a reverb 
There are many different types of reverb. They all sound pretty good. They are a little bit different, for, the, for example, especially the tail of the reverb. So, Adjust the length of the reverb. So we can do a crank it up. And you can turn it off. Yeah, you get the idea. Let me turn it back on. And there's a pattern noise right here. So, you know, if you tap, you know, make it more realistic. Um, you can address the level of that. Uh, I usually just keep it on all the time. Makes it more realistic that way. And here's a high pass, low pass filter right here. So yeah, I usually don't use the high pass, low pass filter knob. Instead, I usually use an EQ plugin to take off raw the things that the stuff that I don't want. But it's good that Cinesimples include this knob, since a lot of times composers can get lazy. I get lazy sometimes. Anyways, as as you can see, I actually re re resave this patch. Uh, this contact patch. So that's why it's called Piano in Blue V2 Classical. This way it's easier for me to recall all the settings I want, such as the mic positions, how wet the reverb is, uh, levels, and all that kind of stuff. And as you can see, I actually changed the painting a bit. It's on 11 right instead of being dead center. Why? Because personally, I like the notes around the middle C area to be a little bit wider, just kind of spread out a little bit. So just in case if you have vocal, drums, or bass, sit in the middle of the mix, or just something in the middle, or I say if you're film scoring something and there's a lot of dialogue going on, you want to give space to those things. So, you know, by simply painting a little bit, it doesn't actually make it sound like it's towards the right side, it just kind of open it up. to the middle you see now it's more centered more mono type of feeling and when you pin this to a little bit a little uh just a little bit to the right it just opens it up it doesn't it doesn't really feels like it's being overly spread out or any sorts but uh, uh my phone hold on yeah all right so that's a quick tip for you if you want to tweak it to that to make it sound wider without using any other additional plugins and all that. Um, all right. So let's load another patch, another preset that I made. This is the jazz one. And as you can see, the reverb is much less and there's more close mic. So it will sound more intimate some sort. Alright, so let me, play. let me play something.
So, yeah. I mean, sounds cool with jazz. As you can tell, um, it's called Piano in Blue, so it's like a duh, of course. It's, it's gonna sound good in jazz, but uh, oh, that was a bad joke. Anyway, so this is a Steinway, it's based on the Cine Symbols website. It's, this is a Steinway Malo D consequent from the Clinton Re Recording Studios in the Midtown, New York City. So it's an old piano, you know, it features in many great albums, such as uh, Maya Davis' uh, Kind of Blue album. So if you want that kind of old school jazz vibe, you know, that you can switch it to, you can actually switch it to mono, which is, which is pretty cool. enough for you you can actually switch the symbols to the tape symbols which um, gives it more dirt and just more saturation you know you can turn on the mono as well using the tape Let's go back to the topic, the difference between the version 2 and the, and the old version. This is where the difference is. It's the noise floor of each symbol. So what Synapse Simples did is that they denoise all the symbols that they have, I believe, so that the noise floor doesn't really build up when you play a note together. Let me, let me demonstrate a little bit. So if you play one note, It's not a big deal, you know, there's a little bit of noise in there, but that makes it sound more realistic because when you record in the room, there will be noise. But when we play a chord together, you know, there, there's a little, each symbol have a little bit of noise and they add up to it. In the new one, this is not that much of the big issue. It doesn't, it doesn't really sound that obvious, but check this out. So this is the, the this is the old version that and this is the direct symbols, okay? Let's go to the tape first. You hear it? If you don't hear it, wear uh, studio monitors, uh, headphones, or just good, good pair of speakers. It's pretty obvious, right? Let's go back to the let's go back to the version two. Not bad at all. This one you don't really hear a difference. How about a direct? I just play a lot of notes together. And the noise isn't that bad. You know, it doesn't really do that much. You know, even direct symbols have noise floor built up. So, yeah, so that's the main difference between the version one and version two. And that's cool, you know, like it just it just makes the library much more usable because I say, OK, a vocal and a solo piano and you're playing a lot of crazy stuff and the noise floor just builds up. That that sounds unrealistic because, you know, when you record in the room with a real piano and just play along with it and record it. The noise floor doesn't actually add up, it just stays the same, so that's great. Um, and the other difference is that, you probably know this already, is that there's a little knob right here, it's called simple start. So what it does is that when you actually play the note, there's actually a little bit of, tiny bit of delay because, you know, when you hit it on the simples, especially when you play something really fast, you know. So let's say if I turn this way to all the way. All right, 
uh, that was my failed attempt of playing Bumblebees. But uh, yeah, as you can see, it just lacks it's just a little bit more accurate, faster, more responsive, I guess. Yeah, but I, I I don't I don't really use this feature because I, I like the way it sounds. It just have that have more human touch to it, so it, it's good. But it's up to you, you know. It's always good to have something, a feature that you may need in the future. So, yeah. All right. I think this update is certainly important and necessary, and it's free. So if you have piano in blue, go update it. I have to say though, really, kudos to Cinna Simples. Uh, Cinna Simples is a great company with awesome products such as Piano in Blue, Cinna Breast, Cinna Breast Pro, Cinna Wind. But more importantly though, is that they actually do care about their customers and constantly listen to their feedback and update their stuff, like Piano in Blue. So good job. So do I think this library is worth it? Personally, I think this is the best piano library on the market right now. It's pretty affordable compared to a lot of other libraries. Um, it is $99 at the Santa Simples online store, but you do have to keep in mind that you need to have at least a full version of Contact 4 to run this. Free Contact Player will not work on this library, so keep that in mind before you buy it. And now I'm gonna going to talk about a little bit about the comparisons between Piano in Blue and other products. Um, before I use this library, I use Alicia's keys, and before I use Alicia's keys, I use Ivory. I love all of them. You know, they're, they are all good sounding libraries. They just have different sound. But to me, Piano in Blue has a sound that just fit in everything and more versatile and that's what I had always been looking for. Ivory, it's a huge library, and the GUI is good, but many times I have to tweak a lot to get the sound I want. And many times, especially in the mix of a very busy track, you'll feel the piano is being buried down and sounds weak, and the sound character just doesn't feel right. Even when you know when you EQ it so much, will compress it. And for on the other hand, for Alicia's keys, it sounds a little bit too clean. Although the GUI offers a lot more tweakability. Tweakability is that, is that a word? Um, anyway, you can tweak the noise mic, you know, to make it sound there's more noise in the samples and resonance and all, all that kind of fancy stuff. But for me. It all comes down to the sound, period. When I play piano in blue, I don't really tweak much and it just sounds so nice no matter how busy the track is. It fits, it sits well in the mix and it fits well in all types of genre, in jazz and classical, pop and even dance track, you know. And I have to, oh, by the way, and I have to mention that it's a library that doesn't sound, sound harsh at all. Let me give you an extreme example. I'm going to tweak the height of for the velocity curve so that all the notes I play will be at 127 all the time max out and to me it still doesn't sound harsh it sounds pretty pretty good um, I mean that was an overkill example but you know that's the whole point 
trying to get extreme. And if the extreme is okay, no matter what you do with it normally, it should be fine too. So that's it, guys. Hope you like this video. And if you have any questions and feedback, just comment in the section below. And feel free to check out my website and hit subscribe. Why? Why hit subscribe? Because there will be more videos like this coming out. And I'm planning to do some tutorials on logic and all, all those stuff, you know. So, see you next time.